At least 550 people have died after a cyclone hit southeastern Africa last week. And the death toll continues to climb as rescue workers sift through debris. At least 400,000 people have lost their homes in Mozambique. CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Paddock reports. Where there was land, there is now water. Homes, villagers, entire towns have been submerged. And it's not just the floods rescue workers are fighting against. The clock is equally deadly. It's a race against time to save thousands still stranded. They wait on rooftops or in trees to be plucked from their watery misery into hovering helicopters. Others are still stranded in treacherous waters, braved repeatedly by rescue workers. People have been left with nothing. And as the floodwaters rise, so does the anger of those left homeless. The children are hungry, said Fernando Sonia. We have nothing. We want support, shouted Joni Manuel. We want food. It's a chant taken up by other displaced residents. We want food, they scream. And when the food does come, it's a moment to savor and briefly forget the rising terror outside. Deborah Patter, CBS News, Cape Town, South Africa. CBS News contributing meteorologist Jeff Berardelli joins me now. So, Jeff, did climate change play a role in the cyclone in southern Africa? Well, it's certainly possible. So, you know, we never attribute a weather event like this strictly to climate change. These things happen. I mean, cyclones like this are common this time of year mm -hmm. in the southern Indian Ocean and just off of Africa. But what's really interesting is there was research put out in November, literally just a few months ago, saying that over the past 30 years there's been a gradual increase in more intense cyclones in the southern Indian Ocean. The first emergence of an equivalent to Category 5 hurricane was back in 1994, and since then there have been several of these storms. So undoubtedly, water temperatures are playing into that. The researcher also said that water temperatures have spiked to about 84, 85 degrees or so, and that kind of is the threshold that she thinks is causing more of these intense cyclones to form. This particular storm itself, it was unfortunate, it moved slowly, it was intensifying when it hit land in between Madagascar and Mozambique, mm -hmm. and so it moved very slowly. What's amazing about the storm is the flooding is un precedented with this storm. You have to you go 100 miles inland and you have an area flooded the size of Rhode Island. That's not wow. even on the coast. That's not even necessarily just from storm surge. The storm surge alone was up to 20 feet high. So this was an incredible storm scenario and we're going to see more climate change and the research that I've seen on it mm -hmm. shows that we're going to see an increase in intense cyclones, not just there in the southern Indian Ocean, but in most parts of the world. God, and those pictures are just so devastating. Um, also devastating, these pictures out of the Midwest. Can we yeah. talk about this catastrophic flooding that we've seen? What actually led to this flooding, this unprecedented flooding, and when could it end? So this was an incredibly wet winter in the in the whole United States. One of the, in fact, the wettest winter in the United States. Specifically in that area, we had a cold pool of air and these troughs of low pressure in California. We know it was an extremely wet year in California. It was also cold there, and you know also here in New York it was warm. Mm -hmm. So we had a big bubble of warm air in the southeast, and where those two collided was where we basically seen the predominant. Uh, winter storm track and it just has been tracking over the exact same area almost uh, the whole winter. It's changed now. The pattern has changed a little bit, but most of the winter it was just like that, forcing these storms up uh, the middle of the country, the nation's heartland, dropping snow and heavy rain. Uh, in the northern part of the Midwest, we've seen about um, double the amount of snow and rain during the winter that we typically would see. And so one of the problems is we had all this snow cover on the ground. The ground was frozen solid because it was such a cold winter. And then this rain came pouring down with the bomb cycle. Cyclone, right. And the water didn't have anywhere to go. The, the ground was frozen, and so it just ran off into the rivers. So people are going to also wonder, did climate change play a role in that? Again, we cannot say that one particular event was caused by climate change, but the bomb cyclone was the strongest cyclone that they've seen on record in parts of the Plain State. So, you know, things start adding up, right? When you start to see a pattern or a trend emerging, you start to think climate change may be playing into it. We have a bunch of graphics to show you what's happened over the past century or so. We've seen an increase in extreme extreme rainfall events in the Midwest and Northeast from around 40% to about 70% more rain in these extreme rain events than we saw, let's say, in the earlier part of the 1900s. Right. That's number one. You can see some of the, the, the footage there, and mm -hmm. it is so sad and, and so catastrophic. Uh, I really can't remember in my time as a meteorologist ever seeing flooding like this in this part 
of the United States. It yeah. kind of reminds you almost of Harvey, the flooding yes. with Harvey, except this is lasting much longer. Yeah. You know, it really is a devastating situation. In the future, we are expecting an increase in rainfall in the, especially the upper Midwest and the Northeast. So the same areas that are getting hit hard now are going to likely get hit harder as, as time goes on. In fact, uh, seven of the 10 worst runoff events in the Missouri, excuse me, Missouri River Valley have occurred since 1970. Wow. It just goes to show you a pattern is being established. Things are getting worse, and this is what's projected, where you see the green for the late part of the century. That's an increase in rain of 15 to 30 percent. And that graphic right there shows you how much of an increase in extreme rainfall we've wow. seen since the early part of the 1900s. 37 yep. percent in that one section. Yep, wow. exactly. Um, so, in the meantime, the NOAA Spring Outlook was released Thursday. What can you tell us about that? You know, they're using the word unprecedented for the amount of flooding that they're expecting. I have to tell you, in all my years as a meteorologist, I don't think I've ever seen an outlook, a three-month outlook, as strongly worded as this outlook, saying that we're likely to see maybe unprecedented flooding, especially anywhere along the Mississippi River Basin. So, from the upper Midwest, through the central part of the Midwest and the lower Mississippi River Valley. Look at that. It's literally two-thirds of the country that are likely to face a better chance of flooding, and about 25 out of 50 states are likely to see major or moderate flooding. So we're talking probably a very long spring. You know, we have, we have a lot of snow melt that's going to be coming down from Canada and the upper Midwest, uh, especially in the southeast because of a spiked El Nino. El Nino is getting a little stronger. It's not a strong El Nino, but it's getting a little stronger, which is rare for this time of year. Mm -hmm. It should be getting weaker by now. We're going to probably see more heavy rain in Texas and also in the southeast. That's going to exacerbate the situation as all that water starts to flow down through the Mississippi River Basin towards uh, the Gulf of Mexico. And this is the outlook from NOAA for the spring. I mean, literally from the Rockies all the way to the eastern seaboard above normal rainfall is likely. So it really is a situation that we have to monitor very closely. We may be seeing this for weeks, if not months to come. Gosh, some really difficult days ahead, it sounds like. Jeff Beardelli, yeah. Jeff, thank you. You're welcome.